You ought to get up in the morning and say, God, I want to know you and love you more. I have done this every single morning of my life for decades. I don't get out of bed in the morning before I do this. I sit on the edge of my bed before my feet touch the ground and I, I, I just say this, dear God, it's another day. And if I don't get anything else done today, I want to know you a little bit better and I want to love you a little bit more. And if at the end of the day that life sucked, that day sucked, everything went wrong, it was terrible. I sinned, there were mistakes, there were all kinds of grief and problems and difficulties. If at the end of the day I know God a little bit better and love him a little bit more, I didn't waste that day. On the other hand, it doesn't matter how many things you accomplish, how many things you achieve, how famous you become, how much money you make. If at the end of each day, you don't know God a little bit better and love him a little bit more, you just wasted that day. Because God did not create you and put you on earth just to mark things off your to-do list. Before my feet even hit the floor, you know, before I actually physically get out of bed, I just take a moment to remember, and one of my favorite verses for the morning is Psalm 143, verse 8. And it says, let the morning bring me words of your unfailing love. For I've placed my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. And then I simply say, good morning, Lord. I don't know where you're going, but wherever you're going, I'm coming with you. And the reason I love that, it says, let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, not mine, because I will fail. That's part of being human. And, and show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. It's just a way of acknowledging, Lord, my steps are ordered by you. So today I want to gladly walk close to you in the steps that you have ordered. Every morning I pray that God will put somebody in front of me that I can help, somebody that I can be a blessing to. And I'm not talking about on TV or in the pulpit. I'm talking about me personally as I'm out and about in my world. Who can I help and who can I bless? Let your light shine before men. That they might see your good works and what glorify your Father who is in heaven. Every day of my life I pray that God will use me to make somebody else's life better. This is a time for us to begin to use our talents. Because every one of you, every single one of you has something to contribute in society. Every one of you has a ministry. Every one of you has an anointing from God. I just love to think about what could happen if every believer really understood who they are in Christ and what they have to contribute and we would stop shrinking back in fear and we would just get out in the midst of our world, your neighborhood, where you go to the marketplace, where you shop, where you go to school, where you go to church, and we would simply do what the Bible says, let your light shine. Whatever, stop worrying about what you can't do and start using what you can do. Every day you should declare, I have the favor of God. Favor is on my family. Favor is on my health. Favor is on my business. Favor is on my finances. This needs to be a way of life where every day, whether it's sunny or rainy, whether you're on the mountaintop or in the valley, you get up in the morning and say, I have the favor of God. That's not just to remind yourself, not just to show God that you're trusting Him, but you're showing the enemy who you belong to. And the scripture says, if you will acknowledge God in all your ways, He will crown your efforts with success. One way to acknowledge God is all through the day, under your breath, declare His favor. You may not see how you can accomplish a dream, how you'll get well, doesn't look like it's ever going to change. People don't have the final say. People don't control your destiny. People can't see the favor on your life. They don't know what God is about to do. Don't let them talk you out of your dreams. Don't let people convince you that you can't get well. That you'll never afford a nice house. You'll never break the addiction. They're looking at the natural. We serve a supernatural God. One touch of his favor will catapult you ahead. They may be negative, discouraging, condescending. Let it go in one ear and out the other. None of that can stop your purpose.
The favor on your life will defy the odds. Favor will take you where you don't have the qualifications. On paper, it may not make sense. Don't worry, God knows what He's doing. Whenever you start your day, you need to start it with God. And you need to do some things on purpose. You need to make a decision. This is the day the Lord has made. I will enjoy this day. Make an announcement to the devil who is the joy thief. I will enjoy this day. I'm putting on my righteousness. I know who I am in Christ. I'm putting on my peace. Jesus gave me peace. I'm not going to get upset today if I don't get my way about everything. If getting things right with God, first thing when you get up, whenever your morning is, if it wasn't important, then it wouldn't say it all over the Bible. Get up early in the morning and take care of the hard tasks. Get them out of the way first. Don't let some job you have to do threaten you all day and make you dread the day. David got up early the day he killed Goliath. Come on, you're not gonna kill your giants laying in bed hitting the snooze button. I think every morning we need to dedicate ourselves to God. Let's look at Psalm 25 verse one. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life, plain and simple. I get that Psalm out very frequently and read it. I love Psalm 25 one. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life. It's a great thing to do every morning. Just sit or stand or kneel or whatever you're comfortable and just lift up your hands and say, Here I am, Lord, I'm yours. Every morning, we have to go to Him and say, God, show me my assignment. Show me what to do. Show me where to go. Give me the words to speak. Asking for wisdom, for guidance, that's an act of surrender. It takes humility to say, God, you know what's best for me. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Open the right doors, close the wrong doors, make the path clear. The scripture says, when you acknowledge God in all your ways, He will direct your path. But too often, we make our plans without consulting God. Then we ask Him to bless those plans. We wonder why it's a struggle, why it feels like it's always uphill. We have it backwards. We're making a move and then asking God for help. The right way is to ask God first. God, what do you want me to do? Should I date this person? Should I start this new project? Should I make this purchase? If you feel peace about it, then move forward. If not, hold on, knowing that God knows what's best for you. When every morning you ask God for wisdom, you are showing your dependency on Him. When you humble yourself like that, the scripture says, God will exalt you. A lot of people these days, they're too prideful, think I don't need any help. I can do this on my own. Joel, look at how successful I am already. Think about where you could be if you'd start acknowledging God. Think about the mistakes He could have saved you from. Think about the opportunity, the favor, the doors you couldn't open but God can open. Don't do it on your own. That will limit you. Set your mind every morning. I'm going to be a peacemaker and a maintainer of peace. I'm going to be adaptable. If I don't get my way, then I'll just adapt and be happy anyway. And extremely important, Galatians 10, be mindful to be a blessing. Spend a little bit of time every day thinking about something you can do for somebody else and do it early. Set your mind to compliment everybody you get around. Find something nice that you can say to them. We think sometimes, oh, that's, that's a nice outfit you got on, or boy, your hair is pretty. Well, why not open your mouth and say so? What you think doesn't bless anybody. Tell them. The more you compliment other people, the better you feel. Make your mind up to compliment the person that you're married to at least five times today. Do you know your marriage could be saved if you'll do that? And not only that, people will respond to the positive things you say to them and they'll start wanting to make you happy. You can't just complain about everything you don't like. Be mindful to be a blessing. Come on, I dare you every morning to think of somebody that you can be a blessing to. 
I suggest starting every day saying, God, I am absolutely nothing without you. I can do nothing without you. I lean entirely on you today. I am desperate without your help. And really, no matter how many victories I've had in the past, that doesn't guarantee me a victory today if I'm not leaning on God today. Leaning on God yesterday doesn't help me today. I have to lean on God today. You have weaknesses. You have limitations. God has no limitations, but we have limitations. So you say, Lord, I'm weak in this area. I need your strength. I believe you're changing me every day. And I'm not going to spend today worrying about what I did wrong yesterday. I trust you to strengthen me in my weakness. That our weaknesses really don't have to make that much difference if we know how to let God fill our weaknesses with His power. We get too overwrought about what we can't do, and we don't get excited enough about what God can do. You see, no matter what you can't do or what I can't do, God can do. And miracles don't come in can'ts, they come in cans. Well, we get what we believe for. Let's start believing that the power of God is available to us to see miracles in our lives and in other people's lives. We're not going to have miracles if we don't believe for miracles. We have to believe in the miracle working power 